Don't know how to build a team from scratch or find good teammates? DreamTeam.gg, the ultimate team building platform. Get on fast track to advance from novice to amateur and, if desired, to professional gamer. Join DreamTeam.gg today. Hello everybody, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to a very exciting episode of CSK News. As always, hope you guys are on today's episode. All today's stories will be time marked down below. Let's hop into our first story though. Obviously in breaking news, the most important story of the day, talking about Virtus Pro bench player Taz. Of course, if you guys were here last month, he was actually benched for Kingwin member Mihu. It does seem as according to rumors out there, according to Flickshot, I'll link the full article down below for you guys to read through. It does seem that Taz wants to return to a Polish roster besides Virtus Pro and that will be, ironically enough, the Kingwin roster. If you guys don't know the current Kingwin roster, on screen for all of you. They're actually a partial or majority Polish roster with two newish players, Portuguese speaking players as well. That's actually Ricardo Fox, you know, former FaZe Clan, former Dignitas Fox, alongside Muteris. And apparently the team actually wants to go back to a full Polish roster to compete with other Polish teams out there and arguably try and be the number one Polish team. If you guys have been watching the Polish scene lately, they've actually been growing a lot. Every team besides Virtus Pro doing quite well. We have teams like AGO, Team Pride on the come up and doing very, very well lately in the HLTV rankings and performing very well against top teams alongside Kingwin, who's a bit stagnant as of late, but of course, ever since they lost Mihu, they're searching for a fifth member, and that could be Taz himself. So reportedly, guys, they're going through negotiations right now. We would have Team Kingwin trying to get rid of the Portuguese players, and I mean that in the nicest way possible. They would actually get rid of Fox and Muteris and replace him with either Taz, and alongside that, we also have two other players they replace him with because that only makes them a three-man roster with Taz dropping Muteris and Fox. They still have two open spots, and that would actually be two Pride Gaming members, which is an insane news in itself. Itself. You guys remember when they actually first gave away our Taz to the bench and signed Mihu, it was actually Team AGO, a different Polish team out there, who signed all of their members in that roster for two full more years. Now, this makes sense why they did that uh, to eventually, of course, probably prevent this kind of thing from happening, try and prevent Virtus Pro from snagging those players for a cheap price. So it does seem Virtus Pro and obviously other teams out there who are looking for players are going to look past Team AGO for now because of the buyout prices, and they're now looking towards places like Pride Gaming, and that will be two members from them known as Manis and and also Reitz, who would join that Kingwin roster alongside Taz to formulate that new five-man roster on screen for all of you. So yes, I know I said a lot there, guys. We could have Virtus Pro Taz leaving that Virtus Pro bench if their actually negotiations are met. He will then join Team Kingwin. Team King will then have three Polish members with him. They'll drop Muteris and Fox, their Portuguese players, and pick up Manis and Reitz from Pride Gaming and then compete to be the number one Polish team. Like I said previously, guys, there are now currently four Polish rosters out there who are competing for that number one spot. Virtus Pro probably still arguably number one spot just given their sheer power and of course the organization that four core that's still there of course one of the best rosters in history of CSGO alongside that though AGO and Pride and also Kingwin are still on the rise and have been for quite some time and they're certainly going to compete here Kingwin is if they try and sign this all new Polish roster and that was in breaking news and also I guess in kind of a funny CSGO news story out there for all of you guys who care about CSGO sponsors in the scene obviously right now more than ever we've seen an oversaturation of gambling videos the only way YouTubers right now due to de demonetization can actually make a living is is making gambling videos. I've not made too many out there, but I try and get a sponsor from time to time, and sometimes those sponsors are actually gamblers. The other day, I actually got a funny email from a website known as Easy Skins. I thought, okay, that's a pretty cool name. I might take on this sponsor. Maybe, of course, you know, it had a, a, a pretty decent offer for one of my streams out there, so I thought maybe I'd look into it. And uh, then I looked at their website, and does it look familiar at all to you guys? It's actually, well, yeah, if it does look familiar, it actually, it's actually the exact replica of another popular website out there known as CSGO Fast. So just to show you guys, it's kind of tough out there. You can't take every sponsor you get so yeah unfortunately enough I will not be sponsored by either of those websites it's just kind of funny though it's an exact replica of the site down to the player account number itself although when they emailed back they said no 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 we didn't copy the website we just took all the best features which happened to be every single feature on the website. On top of that though guys, and breaking news out there, kind of some, some UK drama for, if you guys want to call it that as well. I do want to talk about two players, one known as Thomas CS, the other one known as The Doc out there. Now again, I do want to clarify, I've reached out to The the Doc actually to clarify if these guys two, two, two guys are actually joking. If you guys don't know The Doc, he actually is a pretty popular Twitch streamer. Also has a YouTube channel, I'll link both those things down below, but he's also fully mute. So he rarely speaks, either due to an inability or actually an unwillingness to speak himself, that's why they call them mute. Now I'm not really sure of what his exact details are. Right, again, I've reached out to him to make sure this is a joke, or if it is not a joke, I still want to share it with all of you guys. So actually, a couple days ago, we had these two guys talking, both Thomas and Doc on Twitter. It was actually first though the Doc talking about uh, Devren. Devren actually be one of the few players who was actually announced for the new Gamer Z Season 2 show. I'll talk about that in the next story for the details about that. He actually replied saying congratulations. 
Doc says, nice Devrin, almost skinnier than me. Then we have Thomas replying and saying, rank G, more like rank noobs, whatever he might say there. And then we also have Doc replying to him, saying that they'll have free food there so he can look more like you. So obviously a stab there at Thomas, accusing him of being maybe a bit overweight. And then we had Thomas maybe take it a bit too far and reply with this. Well, at least he'll be able to talk to his new teammates. And then in brackets, unlike you, an obvious jab at the fact that Doc is mute and can't talk which was, was eye-opening to see that kind of comment. Also, though, I wanted to look into this and see if these guys were going back because the doc, or doc did not really reply with any anger towards this. He might have taken it lightheartedly. Uh, maybe he's heard these jokes plenty of times in the past. If you look to, back in the past of these two, they've also jabbed at each other in the past quite a bit. We also have them talking here back in January where, again, uh, they, they talked about this. Doc had this tweet as well, asking people how much he weighed. And then we had uh, Thomas reply, easy 120 kilograms because 100 hours per week. So kind of a subtle jab there, easily saying he's, he's that heavy because all all he did was sit around and play CSGO. And so I, I, want, I really want to know if these guys were joking. And again, they so this could be a joke. So don't hate on Thomas yet. I'm looking for clarification. But if it was a joke, even then, going down to saying that he could, that Devrin could talk to his teammates, but this guy couldn't because he was mute. Man, it's like some KNG stuff, but like on a, a far less level because Thomas only being an FPL player, also Doc uh, not really attached to any, any prime organizations out there as well. On top of that, though, we also have Doc being banned currently on ESCA due to malicious activity. Also leads you guys to think uh, this, this this might be not the, the most uh, um, kind-hearted guy either. So again, looking into the past of things, this might be a joke and maybe they were just joking around and they weren't taking it seriously. On top of that, though, apparently Doc had some malicious activity on ESCA, maybe some bad-mouthing himself and maybe his kind of human is kind of kind of dark like this as well. Just want to look into that though, and we'll see what happens. What what progresses out of this? Did Thomas make fun of a mute person in CS:GO? Yes, he did. Did he say "prove it or I'll kill you"? No, not quite that extreme. And you guys probably will think the same about that. And speaking of gamers, we actually have Gamers Global Season Two officially released. If you guys watched my videos a couple days ago about Gamers Season One, the whole scandal around that, then not playing the full out the full out amount to all their players and winners. Uh, apparently, that's not a, you know received the right amount of attention, guys. They're not going to touch on that. Hopefully, in the future, though, those players will be get paid out from season one. As scheduled though, season two has been released. Paula being your main host. We also have other commentators for the season, but people like Blue. So a very good casting schedule, uh, casting uh, cast there as well. And on top of that, we've also announced their full on player list for the entire season. If you guys know any of these players on screen, they actually will be participating in Gamers Global season two. So it should be a great season, guys. I cannot wait for it. And if you guys want to watch their daily live streams of all these gameplays, as well as the background information, and of course, the kind of reality side of the show, I'll link that, uh, art, that actual link down below. It will not be on Twitch. It'll be on a different website known as Mixer. So it should be a great show, guys. I cannot wait to watch it. And that did air for the first time last night. So if you guys want to tune in every day from here on out, the season's officially started and hopefully going to be a good one. On top of that, though, I know I'm a bit late on this one. I know a lot of you guys have actually heard about this already. We did have the official release a couple days ago, back on March 3rd, of, of course, FM Pwn's newest map creation known as Sub Zero. It came out, and of course, the Gray Box version came out several months ago. This officially been released, of course, by Valve and, of course, on CSGO, the main game. And on top of that, announced yesterday as well by Face it Mikey on Reddit. They've also added the map to Face It, so you can play it on that server as well. It's great to see the great traction and attention this map is getting. The real future question, though, of the map is will it get landed onto a competitive map pool? And again, that's a question for way down the line. I think uh, it's nowhere near ready for that. And of course, pro players have to learn the map first, and a community vote have to probably take place. And Valve actually has to take action and, and maybe do something in terms of listening to their viewership. But will there be enough traction in the future? Is the real question. I sure hope so. And it definitely helps that platforms like Face It are taking this map on and of course drawing interest from players out there so congrats to you face it i cannot wait to see other platforms actually take the map on and huge congrats to fm pone all of his hard work finally coming to fruition the map does look great i know i'm trying to learn it other players trying to learn the map as well and so hopefully it does well in the future and see some great success now very lastly if you guys did watch yesterday's episode thank you guys for all the great comments about that of course all about renting csgo skins the 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 future skeptical concept out there and again i say very skeptical because a lot of you guys in the comment section nailed it in terms of of all the risks that would actually come with renting CSGO skins. I want you guys to know I'm currently trying to reach out to Loot Bear. If they want to reply to me via Twitter or anything, feel free to. If you guys watched yesterday's video, which you probably should have, although they're not very active on social media, so maybe they didn't see it. I'm also talking to Matt CS, a CSGO gambler and YouTuber, a great guy who actually has contact with them. And we're going to try and find out better for you guys, more knowledge about the future of that website. And of course, this concept could come to the future of CSGO, but there are so many problems with CSGO renting skins, so many potential 
issues with that. Of course, the first of which comes to mind if a kid gets scammed after, after receiving his items, do his parents and their credit card get charged for the lost items? So on and so forth down the line. There could be so many problems with renting CSGO skins, but we'll see what, it, what comes to fruition in the future with that. So hope you guys all enjoyed. As always, my name is Jake Morale Q. I will see you all tomorrow with another episode of CSGO News because of the last two days being so packed. I have a lot of episodes or a lot of stories actually kind of uh, backed up in tomorrow's episode. So hope you guys all enjoy. As always, my name is Jake Morale Q. I'll see you all tomorrow.